And now we will move over to alarm management, a very important part of most applications. And in the panel builder, there are two ways of um, um, of uh, managing alarms. We can have what we call panel generated alarms. This means that the HMI is polling and ev evaluating if certain conditions are fulfilled. This is a typical way of, of handling alarms. But in, uh, in the case of the AC800M controller and the uh, um, um, MMS driver, we can also use controller generated alarms. It means that the alarms are handled in the PLC directly and the HMI is just receiving the alarm information directly from the controller, which will make it uh, much quicker uh, to develop the application and easier to maintain. So what we'll do now is configure alarms in the application. We will uh, first uh, configure panel generated alarms, then we will uh, configure controller generated alarms, and we will also add an alarm viewer to present alarm status for the operator. So in this case, we start with the panel generated alarm, select alarm server. Alarms can be divided into different alarm groups. There's a default group, I will leave it like this, but as you can see, it's possible to add a, a number of groups, additional groups to the, to the software. I select alarm items tab, click on add. I can then type in the text that should be displayed for the operator. In this case, tank level is greater than uh, 75%. I need to define which tag that should be monitored, the tank level. And finally, I need to define the condition. Which conditions should be fulfilled in order to trigger the alarm? In this case, it's actually greater than and the trigger value is 75, like this. And um, that's the only settings that we really need to do for the alarm configuration. In order for the operator to see the alarms, uh, we need to add an object to visualize uh, the alarm states. And to do that, we will select the object called Alarm Viewer that is highlighted right now, I select it, add it on the screen, and in the general ribbon tab, you can see that it's possible to decide which buttons that should be visible, available for operator, as well as in the drop-down list, I can select where these buttons should be displayed. I leave it at the right uh, corner. Uh, each alarm has uh, a lot of uh, information available. It has a state, active time, text, but it also has inactive time, normal time, acknowledged time, etc. By default, we show the state, active time, and text. If you would like to visualize uh, additional states, you just select one of the uh, items in the list and click on the arrow, and it will automatically be added and you remove it by clicking on the other uh, arrow. Press OK. And now uh, we will simulate uh, the application again. So this is a panel generated alarm. We start filling the tank. There will be an alarm indicator that indicates that there is an alarm to attract the operator's uh, attention. When we jump to the alarm screen, we will see that there is an active alarm when it became active, as well as the text um, that the tank level in this case is greater than 75%. The operator can select the alarm, select the, uh, acknowledge the selected, or actually acknowledge all of them. You will now see that the indicator becomes green, means that the alarm is acknowledged, However, the condition is still fulfilled. So if I empty the tank a little bit, it's now below 75. 
we will see that the state is normal. So we still have the alarm in the history, but um, but it's now inactive and acknowledged. So that was a panel generated alarm. What we will do now is to do it uh, in the let's say in the opposite way of allowing or uh, letting the controller trigger the alarms, and we are just subscribing and updating uh, accordingly. So I remove the HMI alarm, panel generator, generator alarm, and instead I will need to tell the controller, the driver, that it should start subscribing uh, for alarms as well. So I click on the tags, need to select controllers, the settings from the controllers, and under the stations tab I need to enable that we um, uh, want to receive alarm and events. There's a lot of uh, possibilities to filter uh, based on the, uh, um, the priority and so on of the alarms, but I will leave it um, at the default values. It means that we will receive all of the alarms generated. Press OK. That's actually the only thing we need to do in order to start collecting alarm information from the controller. In the PLC, I have uh, two uh, function blocks, one called Alarm Condition Basic, and this one generates an alarm when the tank level exceeds uh, 75. And I also have an event, a simple event detector function block that generates um, an event when the value becomes true. So if I now um, start filling the tank level again. We'll see that we yet again received an alarm, but this time it was actually from the controller. So the controller told the HMI that I have an alarm, the tank level is greater than 75, and um, you have the same kind of uh, information available that it's an active alarm and, and so on. And then the operator can acknowledge this as well and, and, uh, and um, solve the situation in this case by emptying the tank. The difference is in this case is that the controller is responsible for evaluating the alarms and telling the HMI that there are alarms available and updating accordingly.